Okay, so I'm speaking with Jen, who's holding an analyst role for a couple of clients that were doing the small accounts receivable but balance write off. So Jen, where where are we in relationship to the tool, and and what and what is it that we're going to see? Um, what we've done is we've put it into an environment that has quite a few uh, small balances that need to be corrected at the end of every month. And so we've put that in as a tool, as an app where they can select a specific set that the tool is based on the different accounts. Like you may have different write-off accounts. You might have a different AR account than others. And so we want to, we give the ability for the client to tell us which accounts those are. Mm -hmm. And so we can really target those accounts. They have control over where those transactions land. Okay. Can I ask though a question though? This client pr primarily does its work with customer deposits, meaning their electronic commerce business, all mm -hmm. of their orders come in with customer deposits. Why do we, why do they get in a situation that the deposit or they got these small balances. Is it small balances are left on the customer deposits or small balances are left on the AR side? What, what's the situation that causes this? It can be both. You know, it can be small balances on either side. And the primary reason is because their e-commerce system and NetSuite have a difference of rounding. And so when they have an order, they may have 20 different items on an order and they give a discount and the way that NetSuite handles the discount compared to their e-commerce system is just a tiny bit off. And so they may have collected a little bit more or under invoiced. So, And has there been some discussion at all of just going, well, instead of just getting it through the small balance right off, what can we do in the front of the problem to see if they could get that problem more resolved? Or it's been small enough to go, look, if we could just write it off, we're good enough. Yeah, it's been small enough, but we've also done a little bit of work on the rounding issue, but we haven't, that hasn't been our primary focus in. Got it. Okay. So either way, we'd have to write off all those things. So the tool helps to have, there's always an opportunity to go upstream and see if we could just work on solving the problem in this front, but it's not uncommon. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen this problem where there's uh, oftentimes problems in between tax. If you have two different tax engines between mm -hmm. the environment, that's where a lot of times you'll see problems happen as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of that happens here too. Okay, so yeah, I'd love to be able to see if you if you would like to share. Sure. Okay, so what we do is we typically set it up within the transaction module. And so then it pulls up this tool where you can select which customers with their balance. And this is all driven by a saved search. So depending on how the client wants to write things off and what their threshold is, we'll build that safe search. In this case, we're sitting at anywhere between minus uh, 10 cents to positive 10 cents. It's I see. So that's like your threshold of saying if the balance and the balance here is the balance across both AR and customer deposits, right? You have to put those together and see yes. where it's like. Mm hmm What this does is when you have this safe search that you've created to, you know, work against this app, you can make it customizable, right? So you're telling it that, you know, what account, so you really could have it against AP if you wanted to. And like right here is where we indicate what is that threshold right here. So for this instance, it's that 995. And so it could be um, plus or minus 195. That's the absolute value. So it's just either mm -hmm. your credit or debit doesn't matter. It'll, it'll catch it. And then you can um, have obviously, mm -hmm. you know, show more information in your app too. So right now we only have it showing four columns, um, but that's really what's going to drive what those columns look like. You know, I'm making a change. This was a, an app that I wrote for a client many, many years ago before this bundle existed, but it was doing the same thing, right? Doing the write-offs, mm -hmm. small balance write-offs. Mm -hmm. They turned off the negative write-off because they got into problems with achievement. And so I'm working on a modification this year where...
they won't do any credit memo write-offs automatically because of this. Mm. But what I'm going to do is have a process for their credit memos where I'll first determine how much did they write off in a positive right for this client. And I can only write off my credit memos, my negatives, up to the amount that I've written off my positives, right? So they never want to, within a calendar year, write off a negative for a customer because like I said, they got into trouble with achievement so that they need to remit those negatives to the state to not yeah. write it off. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting that yeah. point. Isn't it interesting? Right. That is interesting. We, we need to just give a disclaimer to the customers we do this for and just say, hey, like, mm. should we do it this way? Like, there are achievement rules. Like, we want them to be responsible for their, for, yeah. own, for their own compliance. But we probably should just say to them, like, hey, the FYI, I don't know what your what your state rules are and whether this is okay and what the, if there's a threshold, that sort of thing. But again, yeah. right? Every situation is different. It's a great, great yeah. call, John, because it's something we should be informing the clients of. And uh, show you kind of just how it works, right? Works. All right. If we, right. if we see this one, we've got, you know, Jana Clift with a one cent credit balance, right? So we just take a look at her account. And it's fairly simple the way that it works. So one cent deposit balance. So here we Nothing go. to consume it against. So yeah, nothing to consume mm-hmm. it against. So we just select this here. We can change the date of the transaction because you know after you know you maybe you're cleaning this up at month end and it's actually like June 4th or 5th, right? And so you want to be able to backdate it to to whatever. So here you're going to select the date that you're going to run it for. And then we would just process selected customers. Okay, so after I ran that, right? So it removes that checkbox there. So it says that it's in progress and it happens fairly quickly. So now we have deposit balance of zero. Go to sales, transactions. And here we can see that that transaction was created. So it creates an AR transaction and then does a deposit application. Like to... Is that a custom transaction and applies it? Yeah. And so this is the bad debt that the customer that's wants. The, that's just the yeah. GL account right. they put in the app setting, right? Right. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. So Super that, cool. That's pretty it. But yeah. And so then yeah. she, now that I refresh that, that... She doesn't show it's up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But then again, like you said, for audit purposes, you can go and refine it in the file cabinet. Good job, Jen. Thank you. Great. Thank cool. you, Jen. I see. We're going to see sort of the results did. of what it did. Yeah. It, we had a fair amount of rules of how to actually process the deposits or the invoices that are open and to get them closed. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me ask about this. This looks like we're using a custom transaction called. PRI for Prolecto, small balance write-off. It is a custom transaction of GL type or journal entry type, correct? That is correct. And then when it does this, when I can see that you did a debit on accounts receivable, it must have been that the accounts receivable account had a net credit. Yes, that is correct. Does this mean then also then we have to do something to apply this debit to the credits to get them to close up? Uh, The system actually does that for us. It does that. So it actually figures out how to apply this debit that we're entering, inserting here. Yes, that's correct. So if we went into the accounts receivable aging for this customer, there would be no balance now. Correct. How big was the number in terms of just the number of customers before you got it whittled, whittled it down? Do you, do you recall? Around 40,000. It was around 40,000. Yep. Yeah, it's the number of customers that probably more like 60,000. And I got it down to 40,000 just with some outside, outside of this cleanup, but including some of this work as well. Yeah. And one thing that I did do is, is that there were some clients where I needed to, you know, there's some things they don't want to write off. Right. And Mm -hmm. so on some of those customers, I added a, a button on their record that says exclude from small balance write-off. So then the safe search won't even pull that record up if they've been flagged to not run. Okay. I can see this being applicable on other sorts of situations that don't even have the customer deposit stuff. There could just be other things that you could, you could do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Because you can use it on any account. It doesn't have to be AR. It could be AP. Yes. Right. Because what we did is we wrote it in such a way that we can find the threshold of where the problems are. Then we created a plug-in architecture to say, okay, pass that customer in, it can detect what the situation is for that customer and do the transactions that it's needed to, to make it come Mm -hmm. together. That makes sense. Yeah. 
Correct. Okay. Okay. I'm enthusiastic. I think I can, I think I can write an article on